Ezra and Kate to the rescue. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a show. I think it's gotten to the point where multiverse is a trend. And nothing wrong with that, right? We had supernatural phase, the superhero movie phase, parody movies. That was... That was a really dark phase. Cinematic universes, Ragnarok, and now multiverse. Everyone's doing multiverse. And Fiona and Cake came out. I had no idea this was going to be a multiverse story, but wow, did they do it right. And this isn't the first great multiverse show or movie that's come out. I mean, there's been some exceptional ones so far. But I think something that's really great about these stories, like what makes these stand out as outliers is the way it's written, right? It's not written like it's a trend. It's not written that like they're just following the trend, which, you know, I myself have been known not to follow the trends. You know, I'm not like other guys. But following trends isn't necessarily a bad thing because it gets your content viewed by more people. Using the multiverse, it should always help drive the story of the characters. It shouldn't drive the characters. And Fiona and Cake executed almost perfectly. I can't say what's wrong, <laughs> but I found that as a very delicious journey. It followed three protagonists, Fiona, Cake, and Simon Petrikov. Simon at the beginning is dealing with an identity crisis. He doesn't want to come to terms with the fact that he was Ice King once upon a time. And Ice King, although crazy, had some people who admired him and his work. Which wasn't really his work, but i uh, try to avoid spoilers. <laughs> Simon has lost the most important thing to him. His, I don't know, I don't know if they were married. But his significant other, well, she's turned into a almighty being. That's rough, buddy. Sees himself in a world that is so much more futuristic while he is a relic of the past. He stays at home. He doesn't talk to anyone really. And when he does go out, when he does talk, he seems kind of like an old fart, bringing down the mood. So he just doesn't feel like he belongs. Then comes in Fiona and Cake. Fiona feels like her world is boring. She's tired of the day-to-day -day life. That's everything that we feel in this real world. She wants a magical life. She wants something more interesting. But there are some crises that head into the mix and now her world is in trouble. They want to get it back to being magical and their key is Simon who has to go on this journey with them. What's important with this story, what's done so well in this story is, th is that our characters have a struggle. Our characters have an identity crisis that they need to figure out. And the whole journey traverses the different worlds of Adventure Time. It gives us as fans that payoff, this reminiscence, this, this trip down memory lane, looking at our characters that we grew up with in different lights, it lets us explore the multiverse, which is fantastic. But we never lose sight of our characters and their growth. Through each world, Simon is figuring out that maybe his choices weren't the wrong ones. Maybe what he needs isn't to change, to be the exciting Ice King that he should have been before. It wasn't that he could master being Ice King. What he really needed was to live in the moment. Same with Fiona, to live in the moment, to understand the world that she's in, to, to actually try to enjoy it to take what she has and relish in it not just take it for granted and that's where the show really shines simon and fiona at the end of the series the end of this season are not the simon and fiona that we saw at the beginning and although we got our fan service we also came out with a great lesson that's something that a lot of people nowadays feel that's something that i have struggled through for so long looking at each day, each event that's about to happen and counting my days just waiting for that event to happen. I live my life focusing on milestones. This move that I just made to where I am now was a huge milestone for me and I did not live the past two weeks. You haven't had a video on this channel for a while now. And that's not how life should be lived. Enjoying those around you, living in the moment, going outside, touching grass experiencing life for what it is you don't know who you're gonna meet you don't know the experiences you're gonna have 
You need to stop looking at the past, looking at what you've lost, and try to live in the moment, find new meanings. And, you know, the whole idea for this video was to talk about how they did a good multiverse story, but that's just it. A good multiverse story is just a good story with the multiverse sprinkled into it. And that's exactly what they did. And I, I've tried to have as little spoilers as possible in this. But um, if you haven't watched the show, I highly recommend you do. It's absolutely fantastic. Before I go, I want to talk about the MCU. Very disappointed in the path that's going on. It has had its own fair share of good multiverse. But with the cinematic universe that they are creating, to have multiple different shows have a breaking of the multiverse at the same time, but have it not play into each other is kind of weird. It just feels... Like they are using the trend just to use the trend. Like they've given up on the creative direction that they've been following before. And it's not the superhero fatigue that people think it is because when Spider-Verse came out, it was so phenomenal. Everyone appreciated the animation, but the animation wasn't all there was to it. I actually thought the writing was even better. And I, I, I am a huge art buff. I thought the writing was magnificent. I hadn't gone to the theaters, my smile wide from, from cheek to cheek the whole time. It very much tickled my cranberries. So, I don't know. I just, I hope they can start paying more attention to the stories that they're telling and not just have us come to the theater to watch a CGI fight and some jokes that we've already heard in their previous movies. I miss seeing shows and movies like this where they innovate, they don't go the safe route. This could have easily been a Adventure Time spin-off true and true where they used Finn for all the attractive bits this could have been just the Fiona and Kick that we got a taste of during Adventure Time, but no, they gave us real world Fiona and Kick. Fiona was not a badass fighter. She was wearing some booty shorts, <laughs> but she was someone who was dealing with real shit and she cared for people. She helped Sam realize where his flaws were, not just her, many others during this whole story. And I was really happy to have experienced that. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. And we'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Every time I see you leaving traces of my heart back. Hope you pick it up, then as a team, we put it all back. As a man, I shouldn't even tell you when my heart's at. I don't care, cause baby girl, it's you just got my heart hacked. And that's a hard fact. You got my heart mad.